Hello YouTube and welcome to Groundworks. This is episode 7 of Interplanetary Voyage of Exploration. Um, following the great success of Jebediah Ackerman's um, success in, of the going to orbital in the previous episode, uh, while he was doing his orbital stuff, our probe, the scan set terrain mapping, was basically doing laps around the polar orbit of the planet Kerbin, diligently gathering the science and uh, the terrain data necessary to provide more information about the planet and its biomes and also, okay, not its biomes, but its height map and possibly its anomalies. So now I think it's time that we take and collect all this precious science and use it to further advance our research. So here you can see the height map that has been recorded by the, by the ScanSat altimetry sensor here. So analyze it. Even this low resolution data of the planet source is amazingly useful. You cannot wait and to get this technology uh, beyond. Uh, sorry about that. I my window was obstructing my view. Okay, so we transmitted that data in the hope that we can use it in our R and D. So I'm just looking through the data. Let's see what is stored. Um, the sensor detects variances under the surface of the ice. Is there a landmass underneath? So that is the data above the ice caps and results of the gravity scan. So for that one, um, yeah, sure, transmit, why not? And it seems that we're going out of electric charge because our scan set is reporting some static. Oh yeah, the electric charge is completely bonkers. Okay, yeah, well, that's because of the sending of the packets. All right, never mind then. Let us close the scan set window and let us go towards the space center. Okay, 34 signs. Not much really. Let's see if there's anything that we can use it for. Solid fuel boosters, probes, not really. Heat shields, well, we don't play deadly reentry, but still. Cockpits, <laughs> electrics, yeah, we almost have it for the electrics, but we don't have enough. Antennas, definitely not fairings, no way. Yeah. Parachutes, also nothing. Hmm. I am almost thinking we will need to make another mission to gather a bit more science of carbon. And I'm almost inclined to basically take, an, take a vessel and launch it into the polar orbit, I think. Because clearly we should have some science available out there. We haven't also yet unlocked all of the science gathering experiments, which is something we should definitely do. So I'm just loaded up the orbiter, the same one when, which we basically took the first time. And it has 4.6 delta V. Hmm. 
I'm just kind of thinking if that one should be sufficient enough to go polar orbit. Let's see what happens if we remove this booster, then it's 3.7, but with a thrust weight of 1.63. Mm -hmm. What we could do is we could put in one more bigger fuel tank and that should hopefully yeah okay 1.40 thrust away that should give us enough oomph to actually be able to go polar on this bugger i'm still going for two solid rocket boosters i don't think we need much more and with those on we are at 4.9 so almost five grand delta v that should be more than sufficient let's just thrust limit so we are th Takeoff thrust weight is around 1.7, and since it's a small variant, it's orbiter Mark 1b polar. Nothing too fancy, but still. Okay, let's see for the pilots. We can take. we can take loading by the way i have noticed that um, in the previous two episodes either that uh, ed lu has come back from the dead or that actually i had by mistake <coughs> the crew auto response set in so i have went into the save file and i corrected that so ed lu remains dead as a first casualty of my Kerbal Space Pro or my space program so that is kind of fixed now so no more zombie pilots alright so let us recondition the VAB pad And I'm thinking just until we recondition the pad, hopefully we might get even a little bit more science here. So let's see. Uh -uh -uh. And let us warp to complete the orbiter. All familiar parts, so not really that much different than the last one, so it should be fairly quick. Okay, and it's ready, and we have 38 signs, which we will definitely be able to use on the next go. So let's roll out the vessel. Alright. Roll out complete, and we are ready for the launch. So let us go for a launch and we don't want jab he was been on the last mission so let us put loading Kerman I just figured maybe not for this mission yet to take the loser everybody wants a loser on their team right um, I just figured it would be funny to add such Kerman by the way I am taking submissions for um uh, the Kerbal names and professions if you would like to be in the save let me know so crew report you look up at the stars and begin to count you realize you should take off before you fall asleep EVA and let's do the EVA report you hang on to the craft ah we already have that one okay never mind so I'm not gonna take this EVA report because that would require me to go down actually which I'm not ready to do so SAS on and let us we have a liftoff and now since we want to go to the polar orbit I'm basically just trying to nudge the rocket as we pass around let's say 
1.5 or 2000 mark, I start slowly nudging the rockets towards the north. Very, very slightly until the solid boosters burn up and then we'll try to push it a little bit further. Okay, stage. And now we're ready to actually tilt the rocket a little bit more. I'm in 7000 altitude and when apoapsis is of 13, I think we're on a good track. I believe this is the um, final piece of the puzzle we need to get enough science and um, now once we have gone to the orbit Jab and has seen Moon with his own eyes and clearly that presents a new target for the uh, future launches. However, since uh, we don't yet know what challenges uh, does uh, launching a vessel to the moon entail that means that on the next episode we will probably be focusing on the preparations necessary so that we will be able to send probes on to the uh, moon and minmus and uh, by preparations i mean setting up the setting up the communication satellite network I have already covered this in my uh, um, remote tech tutorial, I think it was episode 3, if I'm not mistaken. I will put the link, um, I will put the, the link here as a notation or as a, or below in the, below in the uh, description section. So, if you are wondering uh, how to do that yourselves, you are welcome to check out my remote tech guide series. And, um, yeah, as I'm commenting, uh, we are uh, nicely on our way to the polar orbit. I'm just now making a maneuver note for the circularization burn. So yes, in the next episode do expect that there will be some communication satellite launches. And um, yeah, the episode I have already recorded, but um, suffice to say it will not be as advanced tech as it was last time. So it will be a little bit more challenging to launch it actually. So let us check the science. UV and IR scans of the carbon atmosphere reveal many details about its composition. It consists primarily of oxygen and nitrogen. That's so much for multispectral analysis and let's see the EVA report. Yup, that's the mountain down there. What's the... Whoa. I really have to stop doing it. Let us review what they said. Yep, that's a mountain down there. What's of the greater concern is that the mountain of snacks that needs to be eaten. Om nom 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 nom. Yeah. So the other two we have already read. So, yeah. Sorry, sometimes when I'm going fastly through the biomes, I'm under pressure to just basically collect everything. And that's when I get sloppy and don't read all the text. So, once again, sorry guys for that. I will try to my best to be able to actually read because I think these comments most of those um, science descriptions are pretty funny since I'm using the community science logs and right now we are burning for circularization and almost there yep okay now we're officially in polar orbit. So the idea is that we'll do a couple of circles, gathering science along the way. And then once we're done, come back to Kerman. So 
since now I want to be stopped and interrupted every time when the science uh, new science comes I will be putting global alert sound to always and global warp settings to globally on so that every time I get interrupted when there is a potential science experiment however I'm not sure now since I'm doing the post commentary that that really did work hmm oh well we'll see soon enough yeah now it is and so oh damn that was quick Yeah, I'm also enabling stop warp on discovery. Oh, we have a new EVA. The hills and the valleys of the grasslands seem even closer looking through the spacesuit visor. You begin to long for home. Various trace gases detected in the atmosphere above the region, indicating the presence of ongoing biological activity. Well, Given the fact that, well, basically our Kerbal's origin from the Kerbin, it only makes sense that there is some activity down there. Let's keep this one. And... Yeah. Just briefly checking through all the science that we have gathered so far. I think we can shoot a little bit time warp here. And we are coming now on the polar region. Waiting to see until we get a notification about that. And you can see the moon rise. And here we are. Oh no, this is Tundra. Let's press it and gravity scan. As the gravity scan continues, your mind wanders off to good memories you have of Kerbin's shores. You and the graviolis huddle together for warmth. Absorption of several visible and IR wavelengths suggests that the high levels of organic decay possibly a result of newly thawed tundra. So this is the science from the tundra. Multispectral analysis from the ice caps. Kerbin's ice caps have a very high albedo, reflecting nearly all measure wavelength. Okay, EVA. The ice crystal spider across the visor of your spacesuit. You hope that the suit was made with more care than the parts that went into your rocket. Well, yeah. Hmm. I really don't know what is worse. Your visor failing or your rocket failing. I guess either way it goes, you would be marooned in space and waiting for a rescue mission. I mean, if your visor gets broken well then there is no point of rescue now is there okay EVA report you marvel at how many plants can look so small as you consider letting go of the ship to float freely through space yes wonderful mm -hmm. and I think it's time for some time acceleration By the way, I will move a little bit nav ball to the left so I have a better view. Oh, several infrared hotspots are detected, some of which bear signs of volcanic activity. That's from the mountains. Interesting. I wouldn't expect it to be volcanic activity on Kerban. Haven't seen any volcanoes yet. Uh, maybe it will come in some future episodes. Who knows? Okay, let us quickly drop a quick save. And let us do the time acceleration for 
this particular orbit. So let's see. If we get any science to pop off. Oh, there was some. It was on the shores. Hmm. In multispectral and EVA. You marvel at how many plants you can look so small. Ah, uh, yeah, well, that one we've seen. This science alert is really playing with me. Just browsing through the reports. EVA report from the shores. You chuckle at the idea you are blocking someone's sunlight as they try to tan themselves on the beach below. Yeah, definitely an evil plan. However, given that the fact the kerbals are green, what, they're gonna become even greener? If they get some sunlight? Question is, do they really tan? Oh, there was something we missed. Not the ice caps, water. By the way, I'm trying manually to hit something. And I know that there is a setting, but it wasn't working for me. You look at the contemplate the desert below you, then you contemplate having a snack when you return to the ship because really snacks are far more interesting than the desert. Well, I tend to agree, definitely. Gravity and this. Many distinct geological formations are visible in the infrared emissions from the carbon surface. Okay. The dunes appear to have a stable gravity, though some spikes indicate underground terrain varies in composition. Well, what do you know? Let us see if we can time warp to get some more science. So this is a pretty simple episode, not much going on here, just a polar launch with some science gathering. But it's a very necessary one to be able to actually go to other places by unlocking the nodes. Oh, there was something. Badlands. Oh man, I've missed the Badlands. That's a shame. Mountains. You f feel like in a dream just floating above the mountains below. Hey, you are floating above the mountains below. Yeah, the EB report just from space above. The mountains. Let us do some more time warping. And I'm thinking that we would be mostly now focusing on getting back pretty soon. I mean, no need, no point on looping endlessly, then it just becomes a grind and not really a, a fun game I envisaged from the start. So yeah, let us go down to the ice cap and actually use some of the thrust that we have to slow down and come down on the ice cap, because clearly we will be able to get some 
sweet sweet science from there I'm just lining up the maneuver node and let us point to maneuver prograde This is a very, very simple rocket, not many parts in here, just I'm thankful to the Kerbal Joint Reinforcement that it's not behaving like a wet noodle, as it did in some previous cases, in the previous versions of the KSP, so to say. So, one minute until the burn. Let us come a bit closer, and well, that's good enough, I guess. We don't need to be really exact, but yeah. This looks good enough. So let's hit the engine. And stage, and I think we're almost there. Now fine-tuning if needed, but I don't really think we would be needing it, we are just going directly to the pole. Let us time accelerate this. Once again, moonrise. Sweet as ever. Okay, let us pour in retrograde, so we use the engine bell as a shield against the re-entry heat, not that we are playing with the heat because we are not playing with the deadly re-entry, but still why not think about it as we descend through the atmosphere layers. We are also using our, what remains of our Delta V to actually um, slow us down and come quicker. Okay, we have significantly slowed and now we're coming down. And as we're coming down, we can see some northern lights. Aurora Borealis. Well, th I think it's uh, thanks to um, the astronomer's pack. I'm using environmental visual enhancements and the astronomer's pack beta. I think it was a predecessor to the interstellar one. It was mainly designed, I think, for the .90 version, but it's still for the um, .25, but it still works in .90, so it's not really a big deal. And we're coming down. Temperature scan and crew report. The temperature is a little higher than you measured last time. Is it a measurement error or a sign of Kerbal warming? Well, I wouldn't know. A crew report. You look down and see a sheet of shining white ice. If you stare too long, your eyes start to water. Well, yeah, I mean, the sunlight reflecting of this ice it can be very, very strong. Definitely, I can see it making your eyes water. So, the chutes are popped and we are descending towards the ice cap. Currently some for four and a half kilometer above. It is also very tricky to know what is your exact altitude terrain wise if you're not really following because everything is flat, everything is white, it's so easy to miss a hint that you are actually close to the surface. Passing 500 and our shoots is up. 200 100 and almost there 30 20 I'm just trying to see if I can see my shadow not really never mind let us get some more signs gravity scan the Griviolis are all huddled together and you can't get an accurate reading. Even they are freezing their butts off here. 
keep the data. Temperature, it's cold enough to freeze the water solid. Sure. Crew report. You wish you'd brought your ice skates. Well, yeah, I mean, it would be a one big place to ice skate now, wouldn't it? So, EVA report, you know that there is a joke somewhere in here about an ice hole, but you can't think of it. Must be snack time. Yeah, I mean, after such a mission, you can definitely be hungry. So, another EVA report in the surface sample, hopefully. So, EVA report, you make some notes of the different shades of white. You conclude that the spectrum ranges from white to extremely white. Surface sample, this isn't really solid ground, is it? You got a sample, but fear to dig any deeper because of the starting cracking sounds this ice made. You try not to think back on how you landed here. Well, definitely, if it's now cracking and how did we land here, then... Okay, let us recover it. Hopefully now we have unlocked enough science so that we can actually put some more ambitions probes to work. Okay, 249 science and Ludwig Kerman getting some ribbons. Yay! Operational service, Mach, G-Force, Kerbin Orbital EVA, Kerbin EVA, Dangerous EVA and 10% solid booster because we did use solid boosters. So, let us see what secrets can we unlock. Definitely want to go the antenna's way. And unlock this one is very important comms DTSM1 because without that one we don't have a communication network capable of reaching moon or minmus and we have here all the other ones so definitely we will need to research that one that leaves us with 94 science what can we do with 94 science Hum, hum, hum. Decisions, decisions. I'm almost leaning towards the probe cores because once we get those will be extremely useful. Yeah, definitely go with that one. And can we get the superior? Ah, uh, not really. They're too expensive. Ah, uh, well. We have 44 more science. Is there anything else that we could get for these 44 science? Landing gear, maybe? And advanced or anything that's too expensive, too expensive. Solid rocket boosters. Advanced space flight. Waste management. Yeah, these, these, these are actually useful, so let's research those. So, well, let us recondition the launch pad and also add use the points that we have gathered to improve our upgrades in terms of R&D, VAB and SPH building times. Okay, we improved our pipes. And I think that's it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. This is Groundworks signing off.